Welcome in TNC Radio Live. This is Keep On Talking. Now here's your host, Christine Gray. How are you doing this evening, Christine? I'm doing great. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate yep. that. We are live, <laughs> live here on a uh, Wednesday night, as we often are. Uh, Tom Kirk is on assignment tonight. Should we say it that way? Yes, he is. He's uh, doing a little extracurricular. So. It's yeah. just you and me, buddy. All right. Doing a little extracurricular. Sounds like he's up to some no good. Yeah. Well, let's just hope for There's no bail money required. Yeah. Oh, let's hope so. So. <laughs> and, but, uh, yes, yeah. thank you for the intro. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to be a good night. Good conversation. Yeah. So we've got Robert with us, and we've got uh, Terry joining in. She'll be in here in just a second. And uh, so uh, tell me, what is the conversation Very for tonight screaming. well so what we're going to talk about hopefully um and stays relatively on topic is uh last week somebody hit on the topic of cameras in the trucks and when a driver's recording um how companies react how the you know how the public reacts uh police officers all the above um so we wanted to touch on the subject of literally having cameras inside the trucks for our own benefits protection, safety, um, covering our own butts in, in one way or another, um, how everyone feels about that. That's kind of what our goal was tonight. You know, I think it's kind of a safe topic um, for the most part, um, spreading the word. And uh, as somebody had asked, I think that's where it started from was, was it legal is what it, what the original topic started from. So because you're kind of like their legal expert, um, that's where it started, and that's we wanted to expand on that. So that's our goal for this evening. You know, what do you think? All right, cool. And uh, so there, there's different types of, of uh, dash cams. There are those that point out and th- those that point in and out. And I suppose there's those that just point in, so I'm not quite sure what the uh, advantage would be of having a camera that only looked in. I think that yeah. I think what they were talking about, you know, you've got drivers now who are handheld. They're handhelding and recording inside their tractors, oh. literally inside their tractors. Okay. And sharing that information with the public, TikTok, Facebook, um, yeah. you know, whatever they're doing just to spread that word, like how we how we live on the road. And uh, there's quite a few companies who are making rules and regulations for those drivers not to do that. So that's what it's coming down to. Is that is that what they want to do? Is that, you know, are they getting in trouble for that? You know, policies, making company policies against it. But is it their right to share how they live? Right. Those kinds of things. Right. You know, that, so I think that's that kind of hit on some a couple of us, you know, last week. So I thought it was kind of a good idea. Yeah. That, talk about it. That's interesting. So um, is that something you ever did? Um, as far as like have, when I had my own truck, I've always had an outward faced camera yeah. or multiple cameras. I've never had anything inside my camera, you know, inside my cab facing. I've never recorded the inside of my truck because I'm always safety orientated for me. Um, I am, I'm a chemical, you know, chemical tank hauler. So we don't track or record where we're going, what we're hauling, our destination, our pickup. We don't do that. Um, I don't record my company or anything like that logos just for the simple fact I'm a target. I've been a target sure. since before 9-11. So I know that. Um, and that's how we just, it, it's the mindset. It's the training. We don't do that. But other people, you know, uh, box trucks and reefers and stuff like that, that can get away with stuff like that. That's what we were looking at there. They do that now. They share that information publicly and a lot of companies don't like it. So well, so let's for, for a second here then pick on TikTok for a moment, shall we? Sure. Okay, so TikTok does track location. Okay. Yes. So I think that's where a lot of people are having a lot of hot burn, heartburn with TikTok is that all this information does go back to China. And oh, yes. if the information is in China, you can bet whether regardless of what the company says and how they say it, that the Chinese government has the data. Absolutely. 
So if the Chinese government has data on um, and are able to associate so that person Y is in truck X and they're able to confirm that and then they have TikTok on whether they're watching videos or making their own video or whatever and through that are able to know where any number of trucks are in the United States and thank you to all of you who go ahead and tell everybody in China what it is you're carrying where you're going how long you'll be there and uh, sometimes even giving the exact address as to uh, the the person that you're dropping off your goods from or picking up your goods from with all that information do you not think China has a pattern for how America's supply chain works exactly exactly and you see and you can't and that's where you go and you see all these companies who are starting to make all these rules and regulations about their drivers you know recording their trucks I mean like I said from a safety perspective I've never done that i don't do that we don't do that on a cb we don't do that when we're sitting having dinner with you know in the public we just don't do those things but all these younger generations yes i'm going to pick on the younger generation now they do do that because they don't think about it they're right. it's just not there so yes like tiktok or whatever the case may be that's the one thing that we were you know taught i mean going all the way back to before 2001 we don't share that information. But there's these all these people who are like, oh, well, I'm coming here and I loaded here and I've got this much on and I'm, wow, you know, you just, we don't do that. But these people well, don't think anything of it. Yeah, see, so here, here's the difference between YouTube and TikTok. If I'm broadcasting live to YouTube, I don't necessarily have to have location information on. Right. And TikTok is different and it does track your location information. And you you agreed to that when you installed it, right? Okay. So, to what extent does it, it track your location information? Well, you have the option to say track it any time, or you have the option to say, "Hey, I uh, I will uh, let you track it whenever I have the application itself turned on," or you can. Uh, um, what, what's the other option? Say no, no you, you can't track me at all. Right. Okay. So you've got some options, but most people don't pay any attention to it. They take the one that looks the easiest. Yes, track it. And um, and that does give an incredible amount of information back to the company that runs the app. Yes. So exactly. you don't have to even necessarily say, um, you know, this person is, um, you know, who they are or where they are. The app knows. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, um, now if, if that was an app that all the data went back to South Dakota, I wouldn't be comfortable with it. Why South Dakota? I'm picking a, a, a random <laughs> state, okay? Um, okay. If, it went all, if all the information went back to John Smith's house in South Dakota, I would find that odd and a bit uncomfortable. Right, right. In the I case of you. TikTok, all of that information ends up back in China. Right. This is and why people know. are thinking, this doesn't seem like a good idea. And you know what? But and it's like nobody pays attention to it, though. Do you notice that? They just don't pay attention to it. No. And and, and so other people are like, oh, people are making such a big deal out of TikTok. Come on. It's not that big a deal. But why are you getting so worked up about this? Blah, blah, blah. I, I'm not a conspiracy guy. I'm not. Right. Right. But I don't think, I, it just doesn't seem prudent to me that especially if you're driving a truck and have materials on it that you care about or that are important to the supply chain, whether that's food or oil or chemicals or whatever, that um, I, I guess maybe if you're carrying diapers, I don't care. Um, but, you know, short of used diapers, why would we want to tell 
anybody in a foreign country what we're carrying and where we're carrying it to. Right. Agreed. Absolutely. Absolutely. I I think it's the scariest thing for, you know, outsiders to know what we're hauling on, what roadway is going to point A to point B. Right. Pharmaceuticals, you know, chemicals. Right. Right. You know, giving that information out just doesn't seem like a particularly good idea. Uh, let's see. Terry, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, do you have um, any kind of app that you use to talk to people while you're in the truck where they can see your face? I do. I do. Um, I do live streaming on Facebook. Okay. <clears throat> and like Christine, I used to haul um, very, like, um, things that you wouldn't want people to know. Uh, military uh, loads years ago. And now, not so much or at all. But there's ways that you can do it, I think, on Facebook and in apps that don't track you like that and still be smart about it. My thing is safety first, and the reason that I got into stream live streaming, number one, to educate the general public on how to handle life out here on these highways with us. Right. And number two, there are a lot of people in this country that are homebound that never get to see this beautiful country God gave us. So if I can share a beautiful countryside in the middle of South Dakota, <laughs> and see a couple bison or whatever that somebody never in their lifetime will be able to see. I'm glad I get to bring that into somebody's life. Sure. But there are ways to be smart about it. You know, you don't need to always tell what you're hauling. You don't need to give them an address on where you're going. You don't need to show them the building. You know what I mean? There are ways to handle social media. But I happen to have a group that that is you know, they don't ask all that stuff. We just have a good time chatting and looking at the country. But the, but you have to, uh, you know, so in general, though, the, the problem is a lot, a lot, a lot of drivers do show the building where they're going, do show which yeah. highway they're on, do talk about what it is that they're hauling. Um, you know, they, they, even if they have something that they're hauling that perhaps it's best left unsaid. Um, they still exactly. put out the information. Right. And, and I slipped up and said things. Absolutely. I have as well. You know, I, I, I'll admit that, you know, I've given a little more info. No, I don't carry anything that anybody would really want unless they really want a bus seat really bad. <laughs> I don't know why they'd want my load, but you know, whatever it is. But there's also another safety aspect to okay, it. Well, wait, is wait, wait, wait. Before you go, what go, Christina said, handheld. Wait, be, before you go on, though, you say that, and, and I, and I, while I don't disagree that you know one specific load may not be of interest to any any particular person, all of the data to know as many trucks as possible and what they're carrying and where they go gives an advantage to somebody who could want to do harm to us by yeah, knowing absolutely. who's hauling what, where, when. Yeah. I see your point, Tom. You know, um, you, you added absolutely. all the, you know, each individual thing by itself, not important. But combined, uh, you know, different story. Well, I mean, even, even with what you're doing, your stuff by itself as one data point in the midst of the entire what's happening in America at any given moment not that interesting but you add all that together with all, everything else that they know about everybody and suddenly your stuff becomes very important because now they're able to say here's what she does versus what they do and when they do it and how often they do it and where they're going and the whole bit and it gives um an incredible amount of information to our enemies. Yes, exactly. Or to, or to, and I'm kind of yeah. ignorant. I didn't think of all that, Tom. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, 
I, I honestly, do, I don't. And, yeah. and I should. Well, that, and that's why we're bringing really it up. I really should. Yeah, that's why we're bringing it up. Okay, tell you what, yeah. we're, we're past our break time already. Come back, I want to uh, get uh, Robert's way in here. Uh, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Two eight. I'm sorry. Uh, seven zero six. I almost gave you my home phone number. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> mm, uh, your wife might not like that. Yeah, that that would be um, wrong. Seven zero six eight six two eight six two zero seven zero six eight six two eight six two zero seven zero six TNC TNC zero. Or you can use the one button call us button on the uh, app. Give us a call. Join the conversation. Love to hear from you. Chat with you a little bit about all this. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. You're listening to TNC Radio dot live. Keep on talking on a Wednesday night. Stay right there. Hello, I'm Ron Samuels. I put it in reverse gear here Monday through Thursday nights at 10, 9 central on TNC Radio dot live. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Whether you're moving down the highway or taking a break, now's a good time to take a moment to tell God your hopes, concerns, and gratitude. You want someone to pray with? No problem. Just call the TFC Global 24-Hour Prayer Line. It's 866-515-9406. By the way, if you're using the TNC Radio.Live app, just press the prayer line button to be connected to a prayer warrior who will confidentially pray with and for you. The number again, 866-515-9406. Or tap the prayer line button at the TNC Radio.Live app. This blog on tncradio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Six safety tips for truck driving in hot weather. Driving in the heat can create dangerous situations for truck drivers. Drivers need to take specific precautions before hitting the road in extreme heat. With the incoming heat wave dubbed as a heat dome by the National Weather Service, drivers need to be aware of how to safely drive in these weather conditions. Follow our six safety tips for truck driving in hot weather. Every truck driver needs to complete a pre-trip inspection before driving, especially in hot weather. Check tires. Heat can have a huge effect on your tires. As the temperature increases, so does the air pressure in your tires. During the hottest months of the year, it's important to frequently check your tire pressure. Frequently checking on your tires can save you from a blowout. To get an accurate measurement, wait for your tires to cool down before checking the pressure. The heat and friction from the road cause your tires to warm up, which will cause a rise in tire pressure. Also, don't be afraid to take a break every couple of hours to let your tires cool down. While traveling in the summer months, you may want to give yourself some extra time to stop and check on your tires. Protect your engine. Not only should you protect yourself from the heat this summer, but you should also protect your engine. One way to keep your engine from overheating is to frequently check the engine oil. The oil keeps the engine cool and keeps the parts running smoothly. Engine coolant is just as important as engine oil. Coolant helps prevent the engine from overheating in extremely hot temperatures. Keep an eye on the coolant temperature gauge while driving. If the gauge goes above the safe temperature, pull over and see what's going on. Failing to assess the situation could lead to engine failure. Also make sure to check for leaks in the hoses. A cracked hose could lead to engine failure. Tips to protect yourself from hot weather. It's just as important to protect yourself during extremely hot weather. Follow these steps to keep yourself cool and safe during these hot months. Stock up on water. As the temperature increases, you need to increase your water intake. Make sure to always have water in your truck. You never know when you might get stuck in traffic or break down on the side of the road. Wear sunscreen. Many truck drivers forget this step. Even when you're in your truck, you're still exposed to the harmful UVA rays from the sun. Make sure to put sunscreen on before hitting the road. Wear light-colored clothes. Light-colored clothing reflects light, and dark-colored clothing absorbs it. Wearing light-colored, loose-fitting clothes helps you stay cooler and more comfortable on the road. And be sure to check out our blog, Six Safety Tips for Truck Driving While Driving in the Rain. This blog on TNCRadio.Live was brought to you by The Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net.
HotshotSecret.net. At Hotshot Secret, we share the science behind common diesel problems and their solutions. For example, diesel particulate filter regeneration. The DPF catches particulates left over from combustion. The DPF regeneration cycle cleans the filter with temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. A computer sensor triggers the DPF regen, which is often accompanied by a loss of power and fuel economy. The frequency of DPF regens are in correlation to the cleanliness of the fuel burn. Under heavy operation with the dirty burn, DPF regens can occur multiple times per day. Hotshot Secret Diesel Extreme Fuel Additive promotes a more complete combustion, creating fewer emissions and therefore fewer DPF regens. Vehicles using Diesel Extreme experience 83% less DPF regens. Hotshot Secret Diesel Extreme is available nationwide at truck stops, fine farm and auto stores, and online at hotshotsecret.com. Hotshot Secret, powered by science. Welcome back in TNC Radio Live. Keep on talking. I'm Tom Kelly, and uh, Tom Kirk is out. So Christine is managing the whole thing tonight. Well, I think you're definitely much bigger help. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, yeah. uh, so we've been talking about cameras uh, on board and and within the the cab uh, of the truck. And uh, first of all, let, let's not lose the fact that. Cameras on a truck, big thumbs up, absolutely, uh, pointing outwards, uh, watching everything that's going on and capturing um, what's happening. Uh, Assuming you're driving legally and doing everything that you're supposed to be doing, um, this is nothing but helpful to you um, because if something does happen and uh, you end up in some kind of accident or other situation, having something that is watching the world around you can catch that guy who's brake checking you. There are entire YouTube channels now dedicated to people who are purposely brake checking truckers and um, and getting those people in trouble. You know, and you know, it catches a lot of stuff. So, assuming you're driving properly, it's a good thing to have it. It is. It is. So And haven't heard from haven't heard from Robert yet. So what do you think, Mr. Robert? I think it's a good thing to have in the truck. I got one from the company. I got my cell phone, which I use for streaming. Which I see what Tom is saying that uh, you gotta be careful. I am careful about that. I just I make a video. I don't stream live anymore like I used to. I make videos and I put it on my on my Facebook as a video or as a reel. That way, it doesn't show anything but the road. And I play a little bit of music on the background, even though, okay, I'm driving, okay? I stream, if I stream, I stream myself in the bunk most of the time, like doing a multi chat, like we're chatting now, but I do it on live stream through StreamYard, which is an app. And then I show myself and I tell people, well, I'm sitting, but I'm not, I'm not saying where I'm sitting. And they can't, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, what's it called, location on, so they can't tell where I'm at. They'll yeah. ask, oh, where you at? I'll just say, I'll just say, I'm, I don't want this. I'm not going to say exactly where I'm at. Sometimes, yes, I do by accident show a building where I'm delivering to, but when I first started street, I asked my company, I said, hey, can I street? I went to the lawyer, I went to the safety department, I went everywhere, and I said, look, can I not the street? But yeah, of course, because you lease the truck, you're basically advertising your company. And it's, I've had people actually ask me on the road, oh, how good is the company to work for? And I tell them, well, this is the number you call, tell them that I sent you, but ask them. They'll most likely tell, tell you what I told you. And I've got like four or five people hired on my company because I street. Right. But as for safe, but as for safety, I don't hold, I know a lot of people that hold their phones. I see that they hold their phones. I mean, you see all the time they're streaming. I got a dash cam. You can watch my streams. My phone's on the sideways on uh, landscape. You can see my, my uh, dash mount in the left-hand corner. I make sure I show that every time because if my safety department gets a hold of it, which they, they have, 
they could say, hey, well, he has a dash now, so we can't even see him. But if I was holding it, they would say something. Trust and believe. I get a phone call from safety and they tell me, hey, shut down for the day. Or don't do that again. And trust me, they have. Not to me, but other people I know that stream further and truck from my company. And I'm not, I'm not taking that chance because it's, it's not my safety. It's everyone else's safety around me. Now for getting someone brake checking, I had that happen on the truck while I was streaming one time and the, the gentleman I was watching, I was actually an ex-cop He's like, well, where are you? I said, I'm not going to tell you where I'm at because I'm in Iowa. Okay, or let's say I was, in, I was in Florida, I think. He goes, oh, you're on I-75. I said, yeah. He goes, I know exactly where you're at. How come all of a sudden I look to my left and I see a cop just pull out? I'm like, what? <laughs> How did he find out where this guy was, what his life was? But then I looked at the video and I saw the guy's um, license tag on the actual video. You could see it almost clearly. So all we had to do was afterwards get to the video, stop it, make a picture of it, stop and zoom in and get the license tag. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what he did because that guy got pulled over, which is good. But as for dash cams, I only have one. I'm about to get another one because you also use dash cams on streaming too. If you get like a Garmin or I think it's Garmin that only does it you can actually get an app on your phone and you can actually post that stuff on your uh, Facebook or TikTok or whatever, uh, Instagram, for instance. Now, TikTok, I did not know that they, I know they, they do the location, but not too long ago, TikTok, Facebook were, were like at each other's throats because Facebook doesn't allow, and people like to do this, play music in the background or you get that little thing that, copyright infringement, which I've fought many times I want because I just don't, uh, what's it called, a public domain or something like that. <laughs> so they're like, okay, well, whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to play it. I know I'm not supposed to, but sometimes people around you are playing music. You can't stop them from playing music in a video. So it's just, I'm like, whatever. So, but TikTok lets you actually play music in your videos. And I know that Facebook got very mad about that because they're like, oh, well, how, how this, how that. And so they're trying to shut down TikTok, which I think technically they should make it so that whoever is controlling TikTok has to go by American law or whatever law they they're not supposed to be able to use it. Use it against the co the country that most of the people actually street through. Right, but I think I mean, Tom. I, had, actually, people. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. But, I think Tom had making made a very valid point. It's a Chinese owned company. Yeah. So yeah, that's why they get away. With, that's why they get away with what they get away with. Yeah, it's a right. Chinese owned company, so they can't. They don't have to go by American laws. Exactly. So, I mean, that's why they get away with streaming music. Who are they gonna, you know, who's gonna sue them? Exactly. Facebook's different. You can't. Yeah. yeah, Facebook is owned by a young gentleman of thirty-two years old or thirty-four years old. Exactly. But I, th I think it's more. It's not more. It's not not about copyright infringement. It's about these Aerosmith, uh, Metallica, whoever who be on play. Every time you play the music, they're supposed to get paid a. Uh, percentage or I think it's something like ten dollars every time. I don't know how much I'm putting that number out there. So they won't get that payment because we're doing it on Facebook. They don't care about right. copyright that that's doing that's doing free advertising for them. They're worried right. about their payment. The royalties. But so either way, so like Royalty, I said, exactly the royalties. But um the as far as the recordings go though, the video recordings, at least for the most part, you're technically, you know, you're not streaming while you're driving for the most part and you're yeah. still covering your basis and and when it comes down to security issues like you know um we were talking about earlier those security issues are taken care of and that's what we were all talking about was is it a security issue you're bringing in drivers based on what you're sharing but you're thinking about it in the long run as in safety yeah. i mean again i'm a safety oriented person so i don't really look at it i i don't 
do videos. I, that's just me. But I'm, I have that old school psychology type stuff where I don't think about stuff like that just because I think I've been in, you know, the, the chemical and hazardous material side for so long. I don't know anything else. So I, it, I mean, I'm not one of those like, people. Well, like a couple weeks ago, I was looking, I was getting fuel, looking over, and this guy actually had a stream name on the side of his truck. And then yeah. he had a whole, I mean, I, I swear he had a studio on the side of his truck. I mean, I could see, like, a tablet. And then he had, like, five different cameras. Two in the front. I'm like, for instance, there is a law saying that you cannot obscure your view from your windshield. They don't care if you put it on your, le- on your left side, which mine is mostly on my left side, and you give the door that little uh, post there, whatever you call it, lines right there. But they don't want you having it in the middle. Then you can have it up top. So a lot of people do them. They put their tablets up top or their GPS, whatever it may be. But you can't have it in the middle. And you, you can have it on the left side, but you, you can't be going. Generally, you're not supposed to touch it while you're driving. You're the safety issue, but... I mean, hitting a button here and there on the phone. I don't think it's all bother anybody. It's fine. Didn't we have some laws changed not too long ago that had something to pertain to the windshield, though? I don't recall exactly when. Uh, Tom, correct? Yeah, it can't be within the windshield, yeah. right? With the wipers, within the wiper, where the wipers go. I don't think it, it, it can't be. It could be on the corners, but it cannot be in the middle unless it's on the bottom or Clearly, you can't see it anyway, so it can't be obscuring your view of your mirrors up front and your view out. And that makes any sense. That's right. Why. Right. All right. Hey, we're, we're at the uh, time for a break, so let's do that. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back here on TNC Radio. Live. This is Keep On Talking with your host, Christine Gray. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. This is TNC Radio dot live. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. Are you a control freak? I asked you that in the first part. And I also explained how control is not only a good thing, but it's necessary if you're going to live a happy and successful life. So when is control a bad thing? Very simply put, control is bad when you attempt to control other people. Control is bad when you attempt to control things that don't belong to you. The weather, the traffic, the stock market, and other people. You're not called a control freak just because you keep your closet in order. You're called a control freak because you try to keep somebody else's life in order. Think about it. You're out of bounds when you're trying to get people to vote like you do, or to believe like you do, or or just to live the life that you want them to live. You know, um, unless they're your children and you need to teach them important things, try not to control the lives of other people. Instead, look in the mirror and do a good job controlling your own life. In this next video, we're going to talk about why do people become control freaks, and what do they get out of it? TNC Radio. Live, your commercial driver navigation station. All right, welcome back in TNC Radio. Live. This is Keep On Talking Live on a Wednesday night. And now here's your host, Christine Gray. Thank you. That should be a little better, I hope. Welcome back. We were talking about cameras inside the trucks or recording live uh, streaming or posting live to Facebook, TikTok, um, how you how drivers feel about it, how companies feel about it. Um, inboard facing drivers or outboard facing cameras in your trucks. Um, thank you, Tom. Um, I'm not sure how everybody else feels. I know um, I love an outboard camera. 
I had multiple on my trucks. Um, I'm not sure about, uh, I don't know about everybody else. I know Tom and I had talked about it once before, and he said he enjoyed having an outboard camera, but everyone feels that an inboard facing camera is a um, personal preference, but most people feel like it is a um, invasion of privacy. Intrusion on our privacy. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't drive one, Christine, if there was a camera facing me. I wouldn't go you, to that company. No, I mean, and no I've way. seen them. I've seen them record on their own in the middle of the night. I'm not sure why they do that. Mm -hmm. um, CRST. Well, no, I don't want to say that for sure because that's uh, there are certain companies that I've seen. Um, excuse that one company, but there are certain companies that I've seen that record in the middle of the night for no reason. Um, a, you know, just a jog, you move around, you roll over, whatever the case may be, and it'll start recording. Yeah. Um, no one knows why it does it. Um, safety precaution, um, a jog. They might have thought that they were hit, whatever, but they start recording in and out. Um, I don't think that there. that's a huge invasion of privacy when, you know, you're not using your bunk, you know, curtains to block it off and you're using your window curtains instead and it's still facing you. I don't know. I mean, the majority of us, you know, sleep in our birthday suits inside those trucks. So that's a shock. Hell, it's safe to get a, video, a couple I, videos I know of those. That yeah, there are some trucking companies that also can randomly throughout the day turn on the microphone and hear everything you're saying in the truck. Oh, Whether absolutely. you're talking to your spouse, your co-driver. I disagree with that. I'm sorry. I, I think that if something were to happen, if they can go back and look at it or listen, that's one thing. If I'm involved in an accident then go back 30 seconds or one minute prior to the accident, but I don't think they have a right to. When I'm not doing anything wrong, it's obvious they can pull my GPS and see I'm safely driving down the road at a safe speed for them to listen to what I'm, ta I'm telling my husband or yes. a friend. I, I just disagree with that. I think it's, well, it is an evasion. Don't, don't we have quite a few companies that, um, you know, they've gotten into, oh, God, what was it? There's a company that uh, we were talking about just the other day. Tom and I were having a conversation. I sent it to him yesterday. Um, the lawsuit that came through for Warner. Um, and Texas law okay. states that Warner is at fault no matter what. And it has something to do with the way the law is written, even though um, the driver of the vehicle had crossed the median. It had and hit, war hit, hit Warner head on yeah. and, and Warner was found at fault. The cameras were outboard facing and, and, re, and retrieved that information. This happened back in like 2014 and they've been going back and forth in court and it's gone as far as like state Supreme court. And every time uh, they, they go up against, they lose because it's the way Texas law is written. And, uh, I think when I sent it to Tom, I think we were going to talk about it next week is what we were going to do. But it's the idea that that outboard camera showed them crossing the median. But because yeah, of the way I'm the law like is written. I'm also Christine, the outboard camera. Yep. Exactly. That's crazy. Exactly. I mean, it's the proof is right there. You had it. You have them doing the speed yep. limit. You have, a, you have a recording. That All of that should have saved the Warner driver. It should, it should have. Why do we have it if it's not going to save him? Why, why it, do they bother to put it? You know what I mean? Well, and again, put it, it on came, for that reason. Exactly. But it was the way that the laws are written. Again, yeah. it's written Crazy. so that we're in the wrong. There's quite a few like that. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. So this, you know, it's, it's on a lower state level, you know, or a county level or, you know, a city level, you know, um, how many times have, uh, a truck and a car cross paths and we all know what happens no matter how fast they're going or how slow they're going. That outboard camera is either going to save us or sink us. And depending on how the laws are written in whatever state, that's where that camera truly does or is going to try to save you depending on how the law. exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm a firm believer. For always that reason. Been. Yes. Yeah. In board, I wish no. there were more. I mean, yeah, no, I'm with you on that. Well, I mean, and I but think that just goes into, you could go deeper, Christine, into how it's jaded against 
us professional drivers. If right now a four-wheeler rear ends me and a car, ha a vehicle has to be towed or somebody is transported to the hospital, I have to go take a drug and alcohol test, but the four-wheeler driver doesn't. That's right. It's just jaded automatically against us. I have 24 oh, hours to submit or I get a suspended license, even if mm -hmm. I was rear-ended. And that, and that can go way further into a, a heated discussion, but it's just another example of how no matter what we do, oh, it is now, still jaded against us. Now, don't forget, don't forget, I think you're forgetting something now, that, that accident that you were just rear-ended in, that you have to take, you know, you have to take a urine test for within 24 hours, they can also yep. go back if the driver rear-ended you and was injured severely, you're going back six months of your logs to make sure that if you were off by 15 minutes, yep. you shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have the been accident, there. Yep. And the accident wouldn't have happened. Don't forget that. That's right. That's yeah, the best it, part. It's, just, it, it's like society just has this like black cloud over us no matter what we do you and i have what 50 some years combined experience yes ma'am and you and i we have perfect driving records i know you i do yeah. you do but yeah yet it doesn't matter that black cloud is still hanging over my head absolutely no well you know I'm, i guess i guess in a way you know you know like i said that that outboard camera to me i've always had more than one you know you get the one that the truck company yeah. mounted in and i would have one or two of my own two more out out on my truck yeah. on purpose you know if i turn around and make a phone call you know the company is supposedly recording into a database i don't trust their database i trust my own no. i've got a flash drive yeah. or you know a mini sd card that i know i can pull out and i've got my own i trust no one that's just me is it that sad that we have to go to those lengths christine to protect ourselves when we're 95 percent of the time not the ones at fault you know and what the, but the here's the thing like that well, you know what though, I do, I do understand exactly what you mean, but I would rather protect myself, absolutely, absolutely. protect myself, than do anything yeah. else because I don't trust anybody when yeah. it comes to but my it's career. Sad that, that we're in that place, you know what I mean? It's sad oh. that we're at that that we've had to turn to that that mental thought, that oh. that thought process that we have to do that instead I think of just that being treated as an equal driver. Well, I think it, it comes down to, you know, when you first learn how to drive, you know, we're, we're taught that drivers are at the bottom of the barrel and everything yeah. rolls downhill. So because everything rolls downhill, you have to protect yourself no matter what. And when we first started, yeah. we didn't have cameras and we had rolls of quarters. No, no yep. cell phones. So, That's right. Calling cards and, or yeah. quarters, one or the other. Yep. Exactly. And so we CV protected for direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, because we didn't have all that, yeah. you had to protect yourself no matter what, because you know you're always wrong. Yeah. But so I, and I'm firm believer. If you if you're not if you're not holding your phone and <laughs> your phone is mounted, you know I still believe that somehow something happened. I may have it on my camera, my my stream, whatever. But you're if you're not, you could still be found at fault regardless. Even if you're not holding your phone, they're going to make something up and say, "Oh, well, you were distracted." Um, absolutely. You know, I think. That, uh, I think that, like, like I said, in today's society, I, you know, number one, we're at fault no matter what. But you've added now we've added yeah. in a distraction that that to me is a distraction. Another one, you know, even though the, our phones we answer with blue, yeah, we answer a phone with a Bluetooth and. And, and yeah. again, I don't see four wheelers that uh, have a twenty seven hundred fifty dollar fine first offense, you know, for texting or holding that phone up to your ear or whatever the case may be. I don't see that, but I do it see it. Because we're allowed to push one button. Yes, is from what I understand, is that correct? We're allowed one button, like one button. record or call, and yes. that is it. Well, does it? And I don't even know this. Does it go into detail and say, are we allowed to push one button every fifteen seconds? Like, oh, no. if I hit, for instance, phone book, and then I I wait, and then I hit the husband button, and then so, I wait, and then I hit the call. So here's the best thing about your phone is that if it's an automatic, your trucks, so all, most trucks nowadays should be bluetooth enabled where you push that green button yeah push push it on your steering column or on the radio whatever it is one button you don't even have to touch the phone and tell the phone like you know whatever siri or whoever you're talking to all husband 
Yeah, Whatever. husband, and that's it. You don't have to do anything like that because that's what it's programmed to do. So, like, you're seeing all these people in cars where we're trying to protect ourselves with a camera, and you see all these people who are holding phones in their cars, and their cars are programmed to do it, but they don't use it. See? I bet you seven out of ten vehicles that I see past me have their phone on their leg or in their hand. Absolutely. Like, it, and that's the honest, it's at least 7 out of 10. And from what I understand, and I know my truck doesn't, but I know a lot of these newer vehicles, you can text voice through your car. I do. Like text husband. Yeah. I am on my way. Send. Yeah. Why exactly. is their phone in their hand? There isn't one. Why? There's no excuse for it. There's none because they're right. just, exactly. you know, I think most people are just lazy to learn it. I mean, being at home. No, so. or, go ahead. Or old. Talking about talking about texting. You can also like my headset. I got now. I got a brand new headset. It's a Sony WM one thousand. It's called. But you actually hit the Google button, which is left here or right here. Come. You go, hey Google, text so and so. I love you. I'll talk to you later. And it'll text them for you. You don't have to even touch your, your steering wheel or talk to your radio. Which sometimes it doesn't work. But I can hear you. You guys are doing on certain headsets, too. Hey, uh, absolutely. I agree 100%. So, guys, I'm going to give you a hold on. We're, we need to take a break. We pushed it out twice already. So, uh, hold on one second, and let's get that out of the way. Come back for our last segment, if you don't mind. Please. Thank you. I'm Ron Samuels. We put it in reverse gear so you can enjoy the history of popular music and hear the soundtrack of life Wednesdays at 8 Eastern and 7 Central right after the train station on TNCRadio.live. Becoming a truck driver is not an easy task. You have to meet several requirements. After reviewing and meeting the requirements, you'll need to obtain a CDL or a commercial driver's license through the DMV in your state. To get your CDL, you must pass a knowledge and skills test. Many drivers attend a trucking school to help prepare them for the test. After successfully passing the CDL test, you now have your Class A CDL. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, there's a little bit more to becoming a professional truck driver than just passing a few exams and getting your CDL. Trucking, as you may know, is not an easy career. It can be stressful, dangerous, lonely, and emotionally draining. Drivers need to make it a priority to become fully prepared for life on the road. Being prepared for life on the road can help avoid unnecessary mistakes and losses. Attending a trucking school is one way for drivers to prepare themselves for their new adventure. However, drivers don't always learn everything they need to be successful during their time at trucking school. Trucking schools will cover the basics for classroom instruction and in-driving modules, but new drivers need to learn more than just the basics. How do new drivers acquire the right training? The Truckers Network is proudly partnering with Advanced Pre-Employment Training, which is a training course for both professional drivers and trucking companies. Advanced Pre-Employment Training helps grow your industry knowledge by providing training courses on all the important topics for becoming a successful driver. These include pre-trip inspection, company representation, communication, document organization, bill of lading, refrigeration units, weight and axles, safety, and industry knowledge. Their focus points are to increase stability and growth in the business, eliminate mistakes and financial losses, maintain company safety ratings, and eliminate drivers and owner-operators quitting or losing their jobs. The Truckers Network members can now save 5% off advanced pre-employment training courses by using our exclusive promo code, Become a member today of the Truckers Network and save instantly on the industry's best products and services. Visit the Truckers Network website at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. That's app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Hi, I'm Shelley Johnson with TNC Radio. Live. You know me for the Truckers Network radio show and Women Road Warriors that I co-host with Kathy DeCaro. We know that life as a driver is not easy. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Whether you're moving down the highway or taking a break, you can take a moment right now to tell God about your hopes, concerns, and gratitude. Do you want someone to pray with? No problem. 
Just call the TFC Global 24-Hour Prayer Line. It's 866-515-9406. That's 866-515-9406. Or if you're using the TNC Radio.Live app, just press the Prayer Line button to be connected to a prayer warrior who will confidentially pray with you and for you. Thank you, and God bless. And welcome back in TNC Radio.Live. This is Keep On Talking with your host, Christine Gray. Welcome. Thank you, Tom. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Okay, and we were talking about uh, camera, uh, cameras outbound and inbound inside of a truck, and you're going to give us a little conversation about what happens in, in the next time we're in a truck stop with your phone. Yeah, you know, one of the things you need to be very careful of is uh, your Wi-Fi settings on your phone. So everybody's phone is a little bit different, uh, but if you go into your settings on Wi-Fi and look at um, the Wi-Fi, um, let's see, how, how, which one is this one? If you look at the different networks that you can connect to, okay, you're going to see some that are saved. All right, and I know it's difficult to be on your phone the way you are right now and uh, listening at the same time, but go in and look at your saved Wi-Fi settings and get rid of anything that has anything to do with uh, any kind of company. So if you have McDonald's or Holiday Inn or Hilton or Marriott or anything else as a saved Wi-Fi that your phone remembers, get rid of that. Because if you don't, somebody like me who has the background and the right equipment can, to do it can be sitting in the truck stop and I will be Hilton or Holiday Inn or Marriott or whatever. And when you come in, it says, oh, there's a Wi-Fi I know. I'll connect to that. And oh. now you're connected to me. And I'm wow. going to make sure that I get everything off your phone before you get part. And if you've got Cash App or access to your bank or anything else on your phone, while you're uh, still getting your cheeseburger out of uh, the Wendy's there, I've done anything I can do to make sure that I've got your account information and, you know, How scary. Moved, moved your money around. Wow. That's insane. That quick. That quick. That is frightening. Uh, the other thing we're seeing people do, too, from a, a human trafficking perspective, is you pull into to a um, truck stop and you look on your phone and it'll one of your options on a Wi-Fi to connect to is girls, girls, girls. Oh God! Or boys, 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 or whatever it is you're looking for, and they uh, that will allow you to, without ever getting out of your truck, uh, easily connect to somebody there in the parking lot who will send over uh, whatever it is you're looking for. Jesus Christ! Oh, sad. So all of that kind so of stuff is, is is right there. So uh, the, here's my number one word of wisdom to you. <laughs> Especially if you've been out driving and if you've stopped at any truck stop every night before you go to bed, power off your phone and power it back up again. Do a full power off and a full power back on. Huh. I could get into does all the details. Does that work under a restart, Tom? I prefer what, to do a full power. restart pa count, is that? I, I would prefer a full power off. And I'd get into yeah. all the details, okay. but we only have 30 seconds. So it's time to say goodbye. Uh, coming up right after this program, stay tuned for uh, um, Taillights with the Bonds. Yeah, and then right after that, it's uh, friends from California doing uh, uh, the uh, sports show, Clutch Time Sports. So all of that right here on TNC Radio. Live. Thank you. Stay right there. Thank you.